The Constitutional Court delivered the much anticipated ruling on the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023, with the justices unanimously agreeing not to nullify the law that provides for the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality. We decline to nullify the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 in its entirety. Neither would we grant a permanent injunction against its enforcement. The case arose from a consolidated petition filed by 22 individuals and organizations who petitioned the court as soon as the president signed the bill into law. The justices did not agree with the majority of the 14 issues challenged by the petitioners. Some of the issues are whether the law tabled by private member imposes a charge on the consolidated fund, whether adequate public consultations were conducted, and on the behavior of the Speaker of Parliament during the enactment of the law. The evidence on record depicts of overwhelming support for the bill at committee stage and in the full house. Therefore, we do not think that more extensive con ex consultative cons uh, consultations with sexual minorities would have led to a different legislative result. The justices found that the Anti-Homosexuality Act is consistent with the principles of law, the right to equality and freedom from discrimination, the right to human dignity and protection from inhuman treatment. They argue that each country has its cultures and values to safeguard. Particularly their communal culture, norms and values. It follows then that conduct that deviates from the cultural manifestation of any life, language, literature, music, religion, traditions and customs operates at close purposes with the right to human dignity. However, the justice has partially agreed with the petitioners that the law contravenes the right to privacy and the right to access to health services. They argue that sections on access to health could reverse gains made in the fight against HIV. Therefore, find that section 3.2c of the Anti-Homosexuality Act perpetuates the susceptibility of persons that are HIV positive to mental health issues and thus impedes their right to enjoy the highest attainable standard of mental health. The respondents welcomed the decision of the court, though with concern on the sections which were struck out and are considering going to the Supreme Court. If only 10% of Ugandans get HIV as a result of this, we are going to be bankrupted. So the judgment today was protecting not only our culture, but co protecting Uganda from sliding into economic bankruptcy, spending m malaria money in buying Sodome girls. A small section about health and also about uh, privacy and renting homes and so on, where the court said that, okay, maybe they should be allowed to do that. But well, we are going to look at it. We are going to study. Our lawyers are going to uh, look at it and we are going to give our response to that. If we need to go to the Supreme Court, we are going to go to it. The petitioners are resolute about appealing the judgment, arguing that the justice is only aimed at appeasing the population. You cannot allow this kind of judgment to remain on the law books. That a court of law is citing unverified allegations, is citing public sentiments, is citing unverified customs and customary values. And we are not available to live in a society that oppresses its minorities that discriminates against its minorities. This is just the beginning of a long and protracted battle. Thank you very much. I to go to the Supreme Court and I have full confidence that the judges of the Supreme Court will stand above our cultural bigotry, they will stand above our prejudices, our cultural prejudices, and protect the rights of homosexuals to live their lives as they wish. The decision makes a great distinction from a similar law that was passed in 2014 that was nullified on the technicality of being passed without quorum in Parliament. This comes at a time when the West, more so the United States, has taken drastic decisions like terminating the Uganda trade deal and the World Bank halting new loans to Uganda. Jackson Onyango. NTV.